Welcome to our culture gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello, Scott. And the Uncharted movies are this. It is. Well, but it's not the of. official one. Yeah. But it's still pretty damn good, considering that we reported on it. We were technically right, even though we went with. <laughs> well, you know, it looks like he's going to be Nathan he Fillion's going to be cast in the Uncharted movie. But he's still in an Uncharted still movie. In an Uncharted movie. So, so yeah. So one. yes. It, oh God, we'll we'll get there. But if you, in case you haven't seen, Nathan Fillion somehow took it upon himself to make a Nathan Drake Uncharted-style fan film that's about 15 minutes long, um, directed by uh, Alan. Uh, Ungo? Alan Ungo, Ungo, I think. Uh, and basically he just seems to have rounded up a whole bunch of his friends and just made the perfect Uncharted movie that we always wanted to see. Yeah. And it's glorious. It's spot on in, in so many different ways. Um, so I'm, I am fanboyed the whole way through it. Um, so we're pretty much just going to break <laughs> things down um, because it's only about 15 minutes long. And uh, for me, the first time, because basically it starts with Nathan Drake being dragged out of a car, being brought to a mansion, being told by a gang boss that uh, you know a, p a priceless artifact has gone missing and he's sitting there about to be tortured to find its whereabouts. And that's the first time that it cuts to the Sigvis Palmer, Sigvis Palmer thingy ring. Yes, I can't even say it, but that thing. <laughs> Um, and you obviously like they build up to the big reveal of Drake. And it's the first time we've seen Nathan Fillion as Drake. What were your and thoughts? He, he, right, all like for years and years, everyone has been saying Nathan Fillion will be the best Drake. He looks yes. exactly like him. And I was, I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, he looks, he looks kind of like him. <laughs> He'd be a pretty good Drake. Uh -huh. As soon as I saw him in the costume, I was like, my god, like something just clicked and I was like, yes, this is this is spot on because not only did he look the party, the party had like the mannerisms down, yeah. everything about him, like the voice was more or less there, considering this was a fan made thing, like <laughs> they must have just done it sort of, obviously not on a whim, but they wouldn't have had the prep as a, for a big mm. movie, they got it. So right. So one of the most interesting things is, um, which reminds me of, it's the way that Jordan Vogt Roberts is tackling the Metal Gear movie, yeah. um, where he basically said that you can't go at it wanting to recreate one of the games. You have to take the essence of all those games and roll them all together. And that's what this feels like. He's like Drake's dressed in his, or well, Nathan Fillion's dressed in his Uncharted 4 costume. Mm -hmm. But you very much have a story that's kind of like Uncharted 2 or 3-ish. Yeah. Like mid, mid career, like, you know, like standard Uncharted style thing. Well, that was the cool but thing. it's everything it's at like, once. When, when, when they mentioned, oh, you're the Nathan Drake, they like ring off his sort of list of achievements. You've been to Shambhala. You've been Shambhala, you've found like Eldorado and stuff mm -hmm. and not only was that like a cool nod to like the fans who obviously would be like yep. oh, but uh, it's sort of like I don't know it like immediately establishes a backstory for this like character and it's like this is in that universe yes. yet we're doing something original and like considering this is a fan made thing that was such an interesting way to go I guess that means that it takes place after between Uncharted 3 and 4 yeah so yeah so you can place it if you want to um, but I mean that's the thing obviously with this, such a focused 15 minute film it allows them to just reel off the fan base stuff um, and obviously at some point uh, Drake breaks out and starts fighting people and it's here oh, where I was I was like, oh my god, they even made him fight with the moves that he has <laughs> yeah. in the game. Because yeah. um, he gets grabbed from behind, he does the double kick forward from Uncharted 3, then he spins around and does an elbow just from like Uncharted 1 or 2. Um, and we just, we, and then he does the thing. It was, it was the jump and punch. Oh, we'll get, we'll get to I the can't, punch. I can't, I love the jump. The jump and punch comes at the end way better than the one in Lost because that was ridiculous. But there's a bit uh, where like, yeah, he does all these kind of fancy moves and then he goes to kick a guy, guy catches his leg and he does the Uncharted the 1 insecurity thing from the, first, from the first game. Which just, things like that. And obviously you can say, well, look, it was a very focused time frame. Yeah. They can just roll these things out. But my God, did I mean, that look good. Considering something like that could be very gimmicky, like even in like a prop film, never mind a fan film. It reminds me of when like the Rock used to do the rock bottom all the time in movies. Yeah. They're like, why are you not doing that in that movie? But somehow they managed to pay homage to these moves without just being like, oh, look, he's, it's the move from the game. You very know, true. Like naturally it felt like, properly cool yes and i think it fits as well like it feels like you've got you're giving this character enough identifiable elements but yep. he's not he's obviously not like a superhero little things yep. little things make drake it's one of those things watching it where i didn't you don't realize how iconic drake has become until they start playing on things like that yeah. like he does have signature fighting moves he does have signature catchphrases um so we might as well talk about this the chemistry between him and sully because um bit. yeah well yeah. best bit oh, i thought it was the best bit it's man. one of the best bits I, well, there's a lot of best bits in this it's all really good yeah. maybe it's all one best bit but um basically he's recruited steve and Lang to be Sully, which mm -hmm. is the dude you might remember as this cigar chomping guy, cigar not swearing, from Avatar, um, who just basically plays like evil military man in pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, for me, I thought he was very good. Obviously, he held a cigar well, looked very good, had the whole gruff voice. And yes. You know, they had good chemistry together, but I didn't like how militaristic he was. I'm with you. Yeah. He was, uh, he, he like, he was really, like, really good in the shot, but he's he's not my Sully. He didn't sort of have exactly. that, because like, I'm like, I don't know, the, the humour was kind of there, but it, uh, Stephen Lang is just a scary man. Right, okay. That's the thing, he so he needs to be lovable. Ben, and he needs to be lovable, mm. and you know, he's, a, he's still lovable in this. He's lovable enough, but he, there wasn't that sort of, 
don't know. It was just something a bit mean, missing a little bit. But little I mean, bit. for a fan film, they sort of nailed, it still ticked the, box. Nailed the dialogue. Yeah, you had an older guy, like an older mentor, yeah. like you know, chomping a cigar with a floral shirt on, helping out younger Drake. It was fine. Um, but that's their sort of chemistry gets into one of the best scenes for me. One of the best scenes um, where Drake starts to figure out, like he goes to the the boss's office in this mansion yes. and starts figuring out the way to get the the treasure or whatever. And they just intercut between the two of them, which is the scene that we've seen so much in the games, where like Drake is like ten steps ahead of everybody else, and you just you just have that great intercut chemistry yeah. where like Sully's like, okay, what? Like, are we getting money? Like, what's going on? Where do you want me to be? And then you get the line where like Drake's like, Sully, do you realize? Do you know what this means? Yeah. And it's just it's like, like, oh, he said oh, that and everything, and you don't realize that that's a catchphrase until he does it. And it's yeah. like, yeah, man, it just lands. And like, yeah, for me, even though like I think that the the visual of Sully could be more rounded and more like immediately lovable or something, their chemistry in the script was like exactly. spot on. That was that was the the moment once they started interacting. That it, it was elevated from like a sort of co cosplay like fan movie to yeah. like properly special. As soon as Drake gets out and he starts talking to him, and he's like, "Oh, I should have told them like you had the, had the <laughs> thing. Like I would have a less bruised face. Like it was just like the banter back and forward was was just might as well have been ripped entirely from the yeah. games. I thought that was that was what it elevated for me. Totally. And like the humor in general, the tone is is bang on. Yeah. Like there's no joke that doesn't really land. There's a lot of stuff that just, it just feels, it's the perfect amount of levity. Like the scene itself is just fun action stuff, yeah. but they have it so they maintain character, whether it's coming from Drake or Sully. Um, so this leads to Drake breaking out of the window, um, just leaping out of the mansion, mm -hmm. which I guess is their little nod to how much he goes through in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it literally just dives from like what, the second story mm -hmm. window, plummets to the ground, <laughs> covered in glass, stands up in the glass and, uh, and says something like, oh, gonna feel that tomorrow or something like that. And uh, I just laugh because I was like, yep, he would survive yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Like he would be fine, even though he's covered in blood. Um, and we get to the bit that we talked about initially. <sighs> looks, looks, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, this this moment changed my life. <laughs> this moment changed my life. When he jumps out the window uh -huh. and the camera goes behind him and he stands up and the and the screen expands, the aspect ratio, aspect ratio goes The black borders go away. As if it's like him in the game, like yeah. behind him in like third person. He does this little one shot action bit yep. where he runs, he takes a few guys out and he gets into cover. And I was like, this is how you do video game movies. It literally so is. And it, like, that's the thing. I might end up doing a separate video on this, but it pr it shows Hollywood that look, this is how you pull from a video game source material, yeah. how you read a game as a text and you pull that stuff across. You bring the camera across for one thing because the cinematography in games obviously is, is you know, it's going to follow you. It's going to follow the yeah. protagonist. And we've never seen that in a movie, not as far as I can think of. Like in terms of mimicking like video game cameras, Doom comes to mind, yeah, exactly. like first person right. stuff. But yeah, he lands out of the glass, he stands up, the camera starts to level with him and then you realize that it's actually following him yeah. like a game camera would. And, and he's, he's the thing, right? When, when when this happens in sort of like Doom, when that happened in Doom, it was like such a gimmick. And I was yes. like, this just takes me out of it. If you're going to do your thing, pay homage, but like mm. be your own movie. This to me sort of proved that you could have those video game influences. You could rip directly from the way those games are like shot, yes. quote quotes, And it still work and it still be its own thing and it still be goddamn awesome. And when that happened, <laughs> Me, I, I, I was, I was ready to be like, Ugh, well, don't, don't, right. don't. But I was, I was like, yeah. It was great, yes, and you, yes, you yes. get like, um, I'd actually recommend in this moment if you check out, if you haven't seen it, there's a GTA fan film where they used a drone to replicate the oh, GTA cool. cam, and um, which just follows cars around, you know, around corners and above and stuff like that. Those things seem like they're like, and this too seems like it's on the cusp of how you would do, like I said, video game cameras in yeah. movies, um, and this is a hell of a step forward. Um, but yeah, so we get to take a really cool gunfight where he takes some guys out all in one take, um, and then Sully drives up in the jeep, which is the jeep from Uncharted Four. Yes, um, yes like. Is. The red G from Uncharted 4, at least it, that's what it made me think of. Um, and then they go and drive off the escape together. And then we get to see Elena, we um, who isn't played by someone that I recognize. Um, she's played by the, the, the Missia Monroe. Who I haven't even heard I, of. I, yeah, I, she was in Magic Mike, I think. Oh. I, don't, I don't know how much by um, I. She was pretty good. She was canny though, yeah. When she gets out of the car, obviously, you know, you've got someone in like a bit of dress shirt with blonde hair. It's like, oh yeah, my God, that's Elena. Elena. And at this stage, when you're already riding high on the movie, it's like, oh my God, oh my God, it's someone else. Yeah. And so, but they have good chemistry together. You have a great thing with Drake and uh, Elena where they sort of inform each other as to how they're going to hunt down the treasure. Mm -hmm. And Elena spots something that Drake missed. And they, they just, they complete each other, which again, is a nod to Uncharted 4. Exactly, Scott. Like, <laughs> look, people love uh, um, Drake and Sully. I love Drake and Sully. Hell yeah. the, the, the relationship that is the backbone of the entire series for me is Drake and Elena, and I love that they got that in there. You know what? You pull that face all you want. When they were arguing in Uncharted 4, <laughs> I felt that. I felt that. Actually, to be heart. honest, in Uncharted 2, when they have the love triangle thing, where yep. you and Chloe stumble upon a layer in the cameraman, yep. is one of my favourite scenes in all <laughs> of anything. There we go. Um, so yes, very true. And they've obviously, they've always hinted at that being the, the, the backbone yeah. behind Sully. Um, but I mean, when you have all three characters playing off each other, it's a great little scene. Like you have Sully being like, can't, not keeping up, Elena's pretty much with him. And yeah. then Drake again is a few steps ahead. And he gets to do the standard Sherlockian, like you guys not see this, you don't realize this, and then break it all down. And then yeah, they end up cracking the code and they go off together. And it just ends with a nice uh, shot of like Drake just smirking or Nathan Fillion just going like, yep, 
nailed this. We, we just give me the money. Um, so I don't know where we go from here. This thing reminds me of when Ryan Reynolds did his Deadpool test footage. Yes. And obviously we saw that go all the way to fruition, but it took a lot, uh, what, four, five years or something? I think maybe even longer. Maybe even that. longer. Like, it was a long time. Yeah. Um, and he even took the role in X-Men Origins just for the sake of getting the character into the public domain. Um, so this might be a long ways to go. Um, because I, yeah. yeah. I think this goes one of two ways. It either goes the Deadpool route and people think, this is great, let's mm -hmm. make it. And so he's like, yeah, yes, we're convinced. <laughs> or it goes this Thomas Jane, was it the Dirty Laundry Punisher yes. one, where that was awesome as a shot, but it, it didn't go that ahead. That came after the movie, like, though. Yeah, I know, but that was sort of his, him being like, I can still play the Punisher, let's yes. do it, let's do it this like, way. Yeah, that was after Ray Stevenson. Sort of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like broke took it over the thing. So I think, I hope it's the Deadpool route. I really hope it's the Deadpool route because there is a movie in production right now. It seems it's in it's in trouble. I think it's the going through is, a lot of different rewrites. It's casting a young Drake. It's got Tom Holland as yeah. a critical, which could be fine. And it's like if you this is, if, sure, this is exactly how you do it, like beat for beat, like line by line, yeah. shot for shot. Like just make this into a full movie. If they still go ahead with the Tom Holland one, like I hazard to say that it's just in the shadow of a fan film. Because this is just this is perfect. The fans have been clamoring for Nathan Philly and he's obviously perfect yeah. for the part. Like you need to take one look at him and he looks the part. And it's just like, yeah, I don't know how you can go anywhere other than forward with this. Um but I guess I'm interested to see if Sony respond to it or anything. That's the thing. Because so. to me, you, you have two routes when you make a sort of video game movie. You mm. either stick really, really faithful and close to the source material like this did and try yeah. to get everything perfect and make your own story but try to make it as close to the source material as possible or you do what they seem to be doing and go on like a completely original route and mm. be like, we'll take elements but we won't be that faithful. I don't know, honestly, which one is best because Tomb Raider, the one that just came out, was, was pretty good but I thought in ways that stuck too close to the source material and I think you already have that. Yeah fully realized in the games, and games are cinematic now, especially mm. Uncharted, and do you just need that sort of transplanted on like a movie screen? I don't know, but this I... has convinced me more than anything else. Yes, th th that for me, this this is the blueprint of the thing that Vote Roberts described, where you yeah. pick from, if you call a franchise, if you sort of call it like different elements that make up that franchise, and you just pick from that everything. Make an original story, as original as you want, but you pick from different things, whether that be a fighting style, a cinematography style, a costume, whatever, that lets the fans go, oh cool, it's that, but we're also along for the ride because we don't know how it's gonna go. I really like the Tomb Raider movie, but it was it was it was nigh on pointless because it was just the game again. Yeah. So I like the way that they're doing it. This could be the way that video game movies are supposed to go. <sighs> didn't necessarily work with Assassin's Creed. It didn't. Um, it didn't. So you know, there's kind of values on both sides. But either way, what Nathan Fillion's put together in his, and with his team is for me phenomenal and a hell of a ride. And I couldn't fanboy out more if I tried. He really couldn't. I've seen him all morning. <laughs> oh mate, it's the best thing. But um, you guys, let us know what you think down in the comments below. I'm Scott from Culture.com. I've been Josh from Culture.com. We'll catch you soon. Bye. Goodbye.